This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we're going to continue to discuss tabs formatting. If you'd like to follow along, go under the file menu to open, and in the sample files folder, scroll down to 0710, Tab Tips Part 2, and just click Open. We're going to begin by creating a fill-in-the-blanks coupon for name, address, city, state, and zip. Well, we're going to need some underscores between the different parts of our coupon. And the way people who don't know how to use tabs actually do this is they'll click next to Name and type Shift hyphen, which is an underscore. Let me do the same thing next to address. Now, of course, I would do this all the way across, but I want to show you a problem. I'm going to zoom in a lot tighter on my margins. I'm just going to click and drag with my zoom tool across the margins. I'm going to go to my vertical ruler and just click and drag out a guide just to show you that the underscores do not line up. And if I made them go all the way across my text frame, they still wouldn't line up. So you'll end up with a fill-in-the-blanks coupon that doesn't look all that professional. Let me go back to my type tool and just click and drag across my underscores and delete them and do the same thing with the underscores next to address. Let me select my three paragraphs and I'm going to open up the tabs panel. I'm going to go under the type menu to tabs and I'm going to get my pages panel out of the way. In order to format the underscores, we're going to use something called a leader. We'll be talking more about why it's called a leader a little bit later. First, I'm going to go to a Write Justify tab, and I'm just going to click at about two and a half inches. So in the white space above the ruler, I'm going to get as close as I can to two and a half inches. Doesn't matter if it's exact. And in the leader field, I'm going to type a shift hyphen, which is an underscore. And to apply my leader, I'm going to hit return on a Mac, enter on a PC. And you can see that it added the underscore as a leader. I'm going to click again with my right justify tab at about five inches. And in the leader field, once again, I'm going to hit shift hyphen. And to apply it, I could hit return or enter or just click in another field in the panel. And you can see now my underscores are going up to five inches. Let me click again at seven and a half inches and go to my leader field and type a shift hyphen and click in another field to apply it. Now I can position all of my tabs so there's enough room for each section. So I'm going to click on my right tab and drag it over. So it's going to right justify closer to the right side of the column. And now I'm going to click on the next tab to the left and drag that over. I don't need a lot of room for zip, so I'll drag it over to about seven and a quarter inches. Looks good. And I need even less room for state. So let me drag that over and leave just enough room for my two character state. And you can see any place that there isn't a word interrupting my tabs, it connects the underscores from one to the next. So it's a solid line going all the way across. And best of all, all of my underscores line up perfectly along the right side of my fill in the blanks coupon. Let me scroll down a little bit. And I have name, address, city, state, zip also set up towards the bottom of the page. I'm going to select that. And we're going to talk about an even faster way to format a fill-in-the-blanks coupon. I'm going to use my Write Justify tab, and I'm just going to click at about two and a half inches. And in my leader field, type Shift hyphen. And to apply it, I'm just going to click in another field in the panel. Wouldn't it be great if I didn't have to create the two additional tabs, if InDesign did it for me automatically? I'm going to go under my options menu of the panel and go to repeat tab. And whatever the first tab is, you can see it's at two and a half inches and there's a leader. 
that's an underscore. The next tab is repeated. It's at 5 inches, and the underscore has been added to the leader field. The next tab is 2.5 inches away from that, and that too has the underscore automatically added. So it's a lot faster than doing each one manually. I'm going to drag my tab on the right all the way over towards the right side of my frame. Drag the second tab over so there's enough room for zip. And my first tab I'm going to drag over fairly close to zip because I only need room for two characters. Let me scroll down to the next page. I want to make this page fit my window. So I'm going to get an insert point on that page and I'm going to go under the view menu to fit page in window. I'm going to scroll up just a little bit to make room for my tabs panel and click the little magnet. And you can see it goes right above the frame, at the top of the frame. But we're kind of far away, so why don't we go to our zoom tool and just click and drag across the margins. And now click on that magnet again so it's lining up perfectly. Now I need to select all of my table of contents copy. You can see it says contents, and I have a contents formatted except for one thing. I'm going to click and drag down all of my text and then scroll back up to the top so we can see chapter one. In my tabs panel, you can see I have three tabs. The last tab, I'm going to click on that to select it. You can see it's a right justify tab. And if I go to the leader field and type a period, and then hit return or enter or click in some other field, you can see that it's repeating periods over and over again. And this is the reason that it's actually called a leader. In a table of contents, you have your chapter number and your name, and then the leader leads your eye across the page to the page number. So it became known as a leader. And of course, with complex formatting like this, if I'm planning on using it again, you can bet that I'm going to save it as a paragraph style. We're going to continue discussing paragraph formatting in the next lesson.